Hello everybody, Mr. Pilgrim here coming at you with the second video in our redo of the Bloodstained Ritual of the Night Platinum Trophy Guide. In the first video, we'd gone through the first couple of areas of the game and fought the first two bosses as well. Now, in the first video, I did state that whenever you uh, have a chance to go back to Arvindville, that you will have uh, quests that you can do. As you'll see on the map right here, you'll see these green-like scrolls. Those are going to let you know where you can find the enemies needed for the slaying quests. Now, another thing to talk about is also the um, other quests for just making things as well. So do keep that in mind, as you will have to do at least all of them in the game to 100% everything. But from here, as you'll see, we're back over here, and we're going to continue on and head to the next area of the game. Like I said before, if you can, try and farm this guy, at least early on, or not, like I said before. If you want to change and use a different build than what I do, you are more than welcome to do that. But from here, we are going to be on our way to the next area, the Dien Sec Cathedral. Now, another thing to note along the way is you're also going to want to make sure that you kill at least a total of a thousand enemies, as that will also get you a trophy, as well as, like I said before, the techniques as well. Making sure you at least master one of them will get you another trophy. And then breaking a thousand of the candelabras or the candle holders will also get you some money. Now in here, basically what you want to do is just jump up here. You'll find a waystone, which you're actually going to want to use almost immediately. But if you actually drop right here, you'll find a free health up, which can be kind of handy. Dropping down here, you'll find a room right here. Here you'll find another bookcase, which will give you another set of techniques. And here you'll find another breakable wall with the Ulfbert sword. Now I do think that this is a upgrade just slightly to our current weapon. It's still the same weapon type, of course. Early on, you're basically just going to have to use uh, certain weapons because you can't really craft anything else. Now if you come down here, you'll find an upgrade to your ammo capacity. Coming into this room here, you'll actually find this guy. Boy, wait a He'll basically want you to give him a waystone, and you'll have to do this at least three times. But pretty much when you go back and find him in Arvindville, he will give you a waystone for your efforts, so you're not missing out on much. But from here, we're just going to continue on the main path. But like I said, if you don't want to use the shards that I use, by all means you can. Or you don't have to. Like I said, this is a game that's all about preference. So whatever build that you want to go for is just whatever suits you. I just like using the ones that I like because it's worked out well for me. Now also note is that like before, if you happen to go to an area and it's fi you're finding it quite difficult to go through the area, then by all means you can go to other areas. Here you'll find a new enemy, the Killer Barber. Now this is an enemy I'm probably going to recommend farming uh, just right now as the weapon they drop is actually uh, pretty good, at least I think so. But over here, off to our left, you'll find the next save room right here. And then we are going to be on our way to the boss. Alright, so moving on from here, we're going to head further into the cathedral. Like I said, this enemy right here is one you're going to want to farm. As you'll see, they drop a sharp razor. They also drop a weapon that is really good. Here you'll find more enemy types. The Poltergeist is also another one that can be a good shard depending on how you use it. it really just depends like most shards as well as upgrading it. 
But as you're going through, you'll eventually find this shard right here. This is just allows you to create shortcuts to have different builds, which you can turn on and off. As you'll see, you can hit L2 and then kind of just swap between whatever build you're wanting to do. This will allow you to save builds overall. That way, instead of having to manually do it, you can just do it like that. But there you see is the weapon I was talking about, the Rava Baral. Now, its damage isn't great, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to just basically attack really quickly in chain succession. So I'll show you right here. Pretty much took a bit of damage and you didn't really get to see it, but I'll show you in this room right here against this enemy. Or the next big enemy that we'll get. As you'll see, overall the damage is pretty good. Downside of course is it doesn't really stagger or anything, so let's see right here. You can just chain attacks pretty rapidly of course, and then as well you can also farm the dagger passive shard to uh, increase its overall damage from the same enemy. So here in this room, we'll have a new enemy type, the demon. Pretty easy to take out, as you'll see. If you come up here, you'll find the dance mask. Quickly jumping over here to this bookshelf, you'll find more information, of course. But then you'll have this hidden wall right here, which will give you the rose ring. Now, this ring is dependent, of course, but basically... Uh, your magic restored by the uh, mana roses will be good. So, it, depending on your build, this could be good for you. Now, if you come up here and off to the left, you'll find a barber right here. <gasps> Basically, what you'll want to do so is you'll want to sit down, and you can change your hair color, hairstyle, of course, whatever you want, as well as your costume, as you can see just your overall color and in doing so you will get a trophy as well pretty easy you can bring him more different hair types that he can use and then up over here you'll find a ammo capacity as well as another room off to the right here as you'll see you'll have a new way of teleporting around right here like I said, whenever you get the chance, always go back to Arvindville and check on anything that you want. If you have quests that you can turn in, by all means go and do that. This will save you time later on. As well as checking on your um, your fields that you're growing your crops on, as those will probably be ready to harvest. So you'll then be able to craft food items as well. So I'm going to quickly do that. I highly recommend you do that, and then we're going to come right back here. Alright, so now we're going to continue on the main path. Like I said, anytime you also can save is also probably a good idea. But here you can see the action of the weapon we just obtained doing quite well. Now here you'll have a pretty good hallway that I would highly recommend uh, actually spending a bit of time of and farming the enemy that is. There's four enemies in total, but as you'll see, the XP that you can get from these enemies is pretty good. The only difficult enemy is probably the demon, but we're just going to move on for the sake of things. Like I said, if you want to, you can farm in that area. Here you'll have a new enemy type, the sword. bit tanky and can deal a lot of damage but can also give you your first familiar if you aren't um, trying to farm it just yet coming down here we'll have another save room like always if you get the chance just save it never hurts don't want to lose any progress that you might have obtained 
Especially if you happen to actually got a really good drop from something. But anyways, we can now continue up here. And we are now going to be at the boss door, as you can see right here. And here we'll have the third boss of the game. As you'll see. Not sure what this attack pattern is, but oh well. As you'll see with the build that we are rocking, it's not uh, too terrible or too tough. Not really showing off a lot of these attacks, though. But, as you can see, just like that, the third boss will have been defeated fairly easily. And here we'll get our first um, puzzle-solving shard, or manipulation shards. These allow you to interact and do things with certain objects in the game. So coming up here, you will find a new um, chest piece, which will actually be a direct upgrade to your defense almost two times. And here you'll find your first familiar. The Silver Knight. Now these familiars can deal additional damage overall and just be really good for your uh, overall character. Now coming down here, you'll find an HP upgrade as well as the Unicorn Ring. Basically, the Unicorn Ring will increase your overall um, restoration from items such as uh, potions, food, things like that. So if you have a bunch of those items and you're wanting to not use all of them in certain fights, you can equip the ring and it'll kind of save you some trouble. But now we're actually going to backtrack all the way to the Garden as you'll see right here basically you are going to just head down this area right here and it'll lead back to the previous boss and then you can backtrack to the garden of sorrow so i'm going to see you once we're back here in this big room just to save on time it shouldn't be too hard for you guys to navigate back to it like i said from here you'll just come down here Come down here, as you see. And you'll be right back at the castle entrance. I will show off though the secret room found right here, which contains the Santa hat and a pistol upgrade. I do believe that there are no more uh, secret walls here in this area, which is not too bad. But like I said, I'm now going to see you once we're back at the Garden of Sorrow. Alright, so once you're back here in the Garden of Silence, not the other one that I said, what you can do here is you'll find this stage code right here that you can interact with. And in front of him, you'll find this pillar right here. Basically, if you move it right here, you can come up here and find a secret little hidden MP up early on and then you can finally interact with him and jump all the way to the other side like so from here you can come up here and find an HP up which is also nice and then up here you will find the Kung Fu Vest. Now I'm sure it's a good item, but for what we have, it's not better. Now down here you can find another hidden little archive. You'll get some techniques for the lethal boots and the knife. But here you'll find a money chest. And then you'll find the new enemy type. 
Now, depending on things, I highly recommend farming that enemy type, just because it makes life a little easier. And this is a perfect room to do it in. So what you can do is simply just in exit, enter right there. Also get a another couple items from the plant enemy down below. The Mako weed. But basically you're just trying to farm this enemy to get the next familiar type. Now depending on things, like I said, with all of the shards, they're very hit or miss on when they want to drop, so do keep that in mind. But basically I'm going to skip now to when I get it, and then show you guys what we're going to be using it for in the next room. Alright, and as you can see, you will have the familiar, the Karaboss. So you'll just want to go and equip them. Now from here we can head into the next room. Here you'll have a couple more that you can farm if you really need to, and on top of this little gazebo you'll find another HP up. As you'll see, and then just over here you'll have the fairy healing item. Now I'm gonna quickly gonna come over here and pick up that item that fell real quickly. Or it disappears, that's okay. But from here you'll come into the center of the gazebo and interact with the piano. Eventually the fairy will lay down and then you can play and hear her song. Cinder and blight veil the air, bring the night and your eyes they close. Sweet repose suspended. The hours fly, years go by, then the morning comes, shadowed by the moon, and the angels for whom you speak cry for light, cry for all of us, shards of And afterwards, you will then get your trophy. So moving on from here, we're actually pretty much done with the Garden of Silence. It is more of a in-between area. But we'll be moving on to the next area now. Here, once again, you'll have another bookshelf that you can maybe find some info and archives for. Here you'll have another area. Here you'll have a secret room that you can go into. You'll find a MP up. As well as 500 gold. Pretty nice. Down here you'll find the simian enemy type. Now, the enemy just off screen was an enemy I'd highly recommend it. just not fighting. Depending on things, this is also another room that you might want to farm some of the enemies in as they have items and drops that you might want. If not, that's perfectly fine. But we're just going to move on for the sake of things. Here you'll find a potion in the chest. Here you'll find your next save point, like I said, saving is nice. From here we're going to continue on to the next area. Now we're going to be heading up of course, not down. 
Here we'll be at the Towers of Twin Dragons. Now, we're not going to be fighting the boss in this area just yet, but we're more or less just going to be going through the area. This area is kind of a puzzle of sorts as of how to navigate or going through and finding enemies and things like that. Or you can just do what I'm going to do and just basically run through the area as much and as fast as possible. As you'll see, it's pretty straightforward if you're just running through it. Here you'll find your first inside area. And you'll find a new enemy type. This is thick and upgrade to the first monster bird, the Alo. Here you'll find another archive. Here you'll find kind of a puzzle needed to turn that gear. As you'll see, shards are just random as always. But from here, we're just going to continue on to the left for now. Here we'll have another cutscene, trying to skip as much of it as I can, not to spoil story-related stuff, of course, but you can't skip all of it. <laughs> and now... But now we can move on. And continue on the area. We'll skip that bookcase as we're going to be looping back to this area, so don't worry. But now we'll be in the actual next area we're trying to be at, Libra Ex Machina. A handful of a name, I'm sure. Once again, another puzzle requiring you to use your right analog stick. As you'll see here, this is also another puzzle related to that. Basically, what you're going to want to do is simply try and... Make sure that you interact with these um, so that they come out all the way. You want to do it on certain ones, of course, avoiding um, un letting out the simians. Up here, you can find some garlic or sometimes other items as well. But from here, you can actually come over here. As you'll see, pretty easy to deal with some of the enemies here. Here what you can do is actually just come down here and then slide off. And then we can be on our way. Grabbing recipes is going to be key as you'll need to grab all of them anyways. Sadly if you do leave some of the rooms you will have to re uh, pull these out. As you'll see, these are very dependent on where you're pointing your analog stick. But from here, we can now move on. Be careful not to fall down, which you'll have to re go back through that room we were just in. Here you'll find a secret little room that you can access by just maneuvering the bookcase. You'll find a crow mask. You can do the same thing to leave. But moving on through the area, as always, do any types. As you'll see though, with the weapon we have, our damage output is pretty nice. 
And then our shards are also doing pretty good. For some reason, this jump is always tricky. Best to hold up. Or, I guess not. Holding X maybe will help out. Don't know why it's like that, but it is. Here you'll find another enemy type, the hook enemy. You can also farm them for your next familiar as well. If that's something you want to do. Be careful when falling as those spikes will do a lot of damage to you. But we can move on through the area. As you'll see right here, this little elevator will lower itself, or the staircase. So what you're going to want to do is simply just go up. And in here you will find... Is there something... The librarian. Now basically what you want to do while you're here is simply just click on each of these. And once you have done that I'll on ten of this. them, you will basically get another trophy as well. Really just depends on what you want to go for. I like to just go for luck, because why not? Can't always go wrong with some luck. But now we are going to head down and fight the fourth boss of the game. As you'll see right there, we have the boss door. And just right here, we have a save room. Convenient for us. Alright, so from here, we're going to take on the fourth boss of the game. Pretty, pretty easy, I'd say. Like before, you can get up close. Whenever he does this, he's basically going to be jumping up and trying to do a attack, as you'll see like so, and then he'll fall back down. Basically, you can just run on one side and then jump. And that should allow you to avoid pretty much all of the damage. But just like that, we will have defeated the fourth boss of the game. I was a little careless and took a lot of damage during this fight. But hopefully you guys are able to kind of see the moveset that it goes for. If you stay close to it, you can bait it into going for mostly melee attacks. Now, once you beat that boss, you will then have double jump, which is pretty nice. You also get the Fairy Crown, which is an upgrade to everything except your Constitution, which I see that as an absolute win. But from here, that is going to do it for the second video in our Platinum Trophy Guide for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Like I said, this is a redo. Hopefully this guide is a little bit easier to follow along and is more helpful than the previous one. I will try and update uh, weapons, when to grab them, what weapons I would go for if I'm not wanting to use the current weapon I'm using, of course. Like I said, this is all preference, and you can choose whatever weapons you want to go for, whatever builds you want to go for. If you want to research that, by all means, or if you want to see how I do things, then that is perfectly okay as well. 
just because I'm making a guide doesn't mean you have to do things how I do things. It is entirely up to you. As always though, I do hope that these videos are helpful and informative in any way, shape, or form. This has been Mr. Pilgrim, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.